Day five now. Take a look at the description, part one and part two again. Hydrothermal vents, line endpoints. Imagine drawing these lines on a space and then counting the number of locations where there are two or more lines intersecting that point. And that's it. Part one, you only have to consider horizontal and vertical lines. Part two, you've got to consider 45 degree diagonal lines as well. I kind of anticipated that that was coming, that that was going to be the difference between part one and part two. Um, so I've done both of these and let's look at the implementation. Okay, uh, I created some classes to help organize the data. Here's a point class that's a data class. This is a newish feature. It lets it lets um, the data class decorator modifies the class to put in other methods that do useful things that make it um, since I said frozen equals true it makes it so it's hashable. So these points could be keys in a dictionary or other things that need to be hashable. Here's the line class. And the line class has a constructor that takes a line of input like this. Here's our test data. And it keeps a copy of the input because it's a nice representation of the line. So we have a under repr method here that just returns that representation of the line. Next, it splits the line of input on space hyphen greater space to produce the endpoints of the line, which are going to be strings containing coordinate pairs. So when points, uh, sorry, when when the split is done. Then we have a list of two strings. In the case of this first one, 0, 9, 0, 9 and 5, 9. And then we have these two pairs, two coordinate pairs. And for each of the pairs, we split it on a comma and then map it into int. So now we have x and y coordinates that are integers. Or actually, they're still strings. No. Uh, right, so we don't need the int anymore. Just noticing this now. Because they're already turned into integers by the map. So let me just run again and make sure I get the same results. Yes, okay. All right, so this again, for each pair, we split it on comma, turn the resulting strings containing digits into integers via map and int and then create a point out of each one of those so each line has two points one point at each end point and this could have probably have been um, this i can simplify that even further okay a little on the fly improving so that's the dunder init method, the constructor for the line class. And then um, for problem one, we need to know if it's horizontal or vertical. So um, if, the, if both y coordinates are the same, uh, then it is horizontal. If both x coordinates are the same, then it's vertical. OK, next. We need a method that will return all the points on the line. And so how does this work? Let's look at this in a moment. First, we just for convenience, we extract the, the points, the endpoints into P1 and P2. And then we compute what you would have to do to the X coordinate, the starting X coordinate to get it to the ending X coordinate. So we're handling the case where um, maybe we've got a diagonal that's um, that's going that's ascending or a diagonal that's descending. 
or um, it doesn't matter whether the first x coordinate is smaller than the second coordinate or same thing with the y's because we simply find what to add a minus one zero or one to x and y in order to advance to get closer to the other end of the line and um, I think I mentioned that the only allowable diagonals are 45 degrees so that simplifies uh, processing a bit so we compute what we have to do to x and y to move them in the direction toward the end and we create variables x and y for the starting coordinate pair and then we create an empty list of the points we're collecting and we have this loop that says um, while you haven't reached the end append a new point from x and y and then advance x and y based on those change values and then the loop will will fall out because we've arrived at the very last point and we have to do a final append now I really don't like that I've duplicated this but without studying it some more I, I don't have a, a better solution and then we return the points and that's the end of the line class now this line reads the data and then this takes the data and produces a list of these line objects and then this takes the line the lines object and keeps only those where the lines are horizontal or vertical that's for part one okay so the final thing to look at is num with at least two and this takes lines either the, either only the horizontal and vertical ones or all the lines and um, it produces the points on line so remember each line will give you a list of the points on the line so we're going to end up with a nested list which we don't want so go and look up uh, chain from iter tools if you want an explanation of what I'm doing here I'm trying to make a simple flat list of points when what we really have is a list of lists of points so that's what the the chain thing does so now we have a list of the points um, coming from all the lines and then we use this counter class um, from collections import counter to count uh, it's real nice let me just put a breakpoint here so we have 26 points and then we load them into the counter and counter I don't know if we can easily uh, see it here but counter yeah this will be fine it tells us that for a couple of these points there were two lines intersecting it well for several of them um, and so now with the counter we can take the counter values and the counter values is just the two and two and two and one 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 and so on so we're saying um, look at the counter values but only include the ones where that value is greater than or equal to two so you we're producing a sequence of these values where the value is greater than or equal to two and then we want to count them so that's why we say the sum of one for each of these so um, I wonder if I should show you what this thing of ones looks like maybe I'll do that so let's um, extract this to call it ones and I need to make it a list comprehension instead of a generator expression so that we'll be able to see it and then we'll put our breakpoint here 
And let's just look at what this ones looks like. Okay, so ones is really just a list of ones. It's these ones right here. Remember in a list comprehension, the first thing you specify is what you're putting into the list. And I'm just putting ones into the list. But only if, only for those counter values that are greater than or equal to two. And then we sum all the ones. And so of course the sum of a list with five one integers in it is five. Okay, I think that covers it. This one was kind of tough. I've been, I've been a couple hours working on this. So good luck to you, and I'll see you next time.